the inclined plane and tensions at different angles for sines. We're going to start with this inclined plane, and for this we need to set a different frame of reference. So rather than using our standard x and y axes, we are going to be working with parallel and perpendicular to the plane of the incline. So for example, actually let's start with our x and y axes that we would normally have. And rather than working with these, we are going to rotate it. So rather than x and y, we are now going to be working with the perpendicular and the parallel components. And so all we really need to do is, is rotate our perspective a little bit and we'll be good. And so go ahead and try drawing the free body diagram for this if you can. You can go and pause the video and then you can come back. For this, I always add my weight first and this is gonna go straight down. And this is going to have a value of 1.3 times 9.8 which gives us 12.74 newtons. Now, this perpendicular vector to our normal x and y axis is now no longer perpendicular compared to our parallel and perpendicular um, to the axis, uh, sorry, to the plane. And so we need to draw a triangle. And so the triangle that we wanna draw, we wanna have a perpendicular component that looks like this, and a parallel component that looks like this. And this triangle is similar to that of the larger triangle of the inclined plane, which means that this angle here is also 40 degrees. And so if we are looking for our perpendicular component, and let me use a darker color, if we're looking for this component, this is our perpendicular, that is going to equal 12.74 cosine 40 because it is adjacent to the angle and this is our hypotenuse now and this is where the right angle would be for the triangle. For our parallel component that's going to be equal to 12.74 sine of 40 and so that means our perpendicular component will be equal to 9.8 newtons and our parallel component will be equal to 8.2 newtons. And I didn't go through this formally, but this symbol is the perpendicular symbol, and this symbol is the parallel, so it looks like 11 there. Once you have formed these components, let me go ahead and group these together. Put this a little bit off to the side. Do the same with these. And once we've done that, we can completely get rid of the non-perpendicular vector, which is going to be that weight going down. And now we are left with these two vectors. And we can simply move this one over here, move this a little bit out of the way. And so now we have the two components. And this is going to be, let me go and label these. So this one's going to be 9.8 newtons. And this one is going to be 8.2 newtons. And all I've done is move that vector from the triangle that I did below. The last vector that we want to add here is going to be our force normal. And that's going to be in the perpendicular. Remember, the force normal is always perpendicular to the surface. And this will be our Fn. And in this case, we're going to be in equilibrium in our perpendicular. So we know in this case, this is going to be equal to 9.8 newtons. And that is how we do our free body diagram for inclined planes. Once you have your free body diagram set up and you have your parallel and perpendicular components, you can work these problems almost exactly like the prior problems that we've been working out. So see if you can form the free body diagram for this one. I'm going to go ahead and just put the answers on so you can check your work. So if you want to, you can pause the video now. So I'm going to go ahead and put the components down. In this case, our perpendicular component is going to be 6.0 times 10 to the first newtons, which will also be equal to our force normal, which should also be 6.0 times 10 to the first newtons. And then our parallel component will be 37 
newtons. If you didn't get that, you'll want to mark that as a question, and we can go through that in our discussion tomorrow. Now, to use this information. So for this problem, what will the net force be on this block? And you can read that, and I'm going to go and start working it out. For this, we first need to find our free body diagram, find our net force. Our net force will allow us to find our acceleration. Once we know our acceleration, we will be able to use kinematics to find our final velocity. If you want to, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work it out, and come back to this and see if you're able to get the right answer. So using the same method as before, let me actually go ahead and go through all the work here, just so you can see it again. This is going to be my triangle there, and this angle is going to be 34 degrees, which means that this angle is also 34 degrees. My weight, I'm working with a 2 kilogram block which means that my weight, which is going to be equal to the mass times gravity, that's going to be 2 times 9.8, which gives me 19.6. At least it should. Yes, 19.6. Newton's going down. The perpendicular component is going to be equal to 19.6. And remember, this is the adjacent, so this is going to be cosine of 34, which gives me 16 newtons. So this is 16 newtons. My parallel component is going to be equal to 19.6 sine of 34, which is going to give me 11 newtons. And so once I have that done, I can move this component over there. And this is going to be there. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit so it's not as cluttered. Once we found the components, we don't need to work with those anymore. And here we go. From here, the last vector that we want to add is our force normal. And since we are in equilibrium in the perpendicular, this will also be 16 newtons. Once you've made your free body diagram, and this is a frictionless ramp, which means we don't have to worry about friction going in the opposite direction, you can easily tell right now that in the perpendicular, we are in equilibrium. So the force, the sum of the forces in the perpendicular are going to be equal to 0. It's going to be 16 minus 16. However, the sum of the forces in the parallel are going to be equal to 11 newtons. There's only the one force. And that's going to be equal to the mass times acceleration. So that means that 11 is going to be equal to our mass, which is 2, times a. So our acceleration is 5.5 meters per second squared. That's our first answer. So that is our acceleration. And this will be down the ramp. It's down the ramp because it's in the direction of the net force, which is down the ramp. From here, now we need to use our kinematics to be able to find our final velocity. What we are told is this block is starting from rest sliding down for 1.3 meters. It's frictionless, so we don't have to worry about that at this angle, which we've already accounted for down here. And so we just start listing out our variables. We'll go and start with our acceleration. We know that our acceleration is 5.5 meters per second squared. We know that our initial velocity is 0 meters per second, starting at rest. We are looking for our final velocity. And we have our displacement of 1.3 meters. And we are completely missing time, which tells us we use vf squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2ad. So we start plugging things in. We get vf squared is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 5.5 times 1.3. 1. <laughs> 1 1.3. 1.3. And when you work this out, you should get a final velocity of 3.8 meters per second. And that is our final answer. For the last problem that I want to do for this video is here. Let's say we have a 10 kilogram sign held up by two wires with different angles. Now one is going to be at 43 degrees and one is going to be at 55 degrees. 
Now to help you visualize this a little bit better, we can sh show you that this angle here is 43 degrees, and this angle is 55 degrees. And you'll see why I'm doing this later on. Now, when we're working this problem out, we want to start with a free body diagram. And so, we'll start one here. And we first start by just showing the vectors as they are. We have our weight going straight down, and then we have our two vectors that are going out like this, and they're at different angles. And we know these two angles here, if this were the x-axis. And so what we need to do is go from this free body diagram, and this is our general free body diagram, to a more specific free body diagram that has only perpendicular vectors. So let's get started with that. We'll go ahead and label this as our T1, and this as our T2, and this as our weight. To be able to form our second free body diagram, we need to change these non-perpendicular vectors into perpendicular components. So we'll start with this one, with our T1. If this is our non-perpendicular vector, we, that means we have a vector going west or going left, we have a vector going north or a vector going up. We know this angle to be 43 degrees. So that's going to be 43 degrees. We know that this is going to be T1, which means that if we're looking for this horizontal component, we need to use the cosine. So this is going to be T1 cosine 43. And if we're looking for our vertical component here, we're going to use sine. So this is going to be T1 sine 43 degrees. And we can do the same thing with our other non-perpendicular vector. This one's going up and to the right, which means that we're going to have a vector to the right and a vector going up. And let me move that over just a little bit. There we go. And now we know that this angle is 55 degrees put an angle there, and this is our T2. And we can use the same method to find the components here. This horizontal component is the adjacent, so we're going to use cosine. This is equal to T2, cosine 55 degrees. And the vertical component is going to use the sine, so T2, sine 55 degrees. And once we do that, we can come back to our new free body diagram, and we can attach these components. So now, we bring these down together, this one over here, like this. This one is going to attach over here. This one's going to attach over here, like this. And the last one is going to be the weight. It's going straight down, and that has a force of the mass times gravity, so that's going to be 10. It's going to be 10 times 9.8, which should give us 98 newtons. And this is going to be our final free body diagram, or at least before our summation equations. And so now we need to work on our summation equations. We know that this sign is in static equilibrium, so we know that the sum of the forces in the x should equal 0, and we know that the sum of the forces in the y should also equal 0. The x typically will be easier in this particular case, so let me use a different color. So we can say the sum of the forces in the x is going to be equal to, and we'll go ahead and say to the right is positive and up is positive. So that's my frame of reference. So I would usually start with my positive vectors. So I have T2 cosine 55 minus T1 cosine 43. That is the sum of the forces in the x, and that should be equal to 0. I am going to go ahead and isolate for my T2. So I'm going to move the T1 cosine 43 to the other side. So I get T2 cosine 55 is equal to T1 
cosine 43. And then I'm going to divide by cosine 55. So T2 is equal to T1 cosine 43 divided by cosine of 55. Now, when you do the math for this, if you do cosine 43 divided by cosine 55 to get the coefficient in front of T1, this should give you 1.275 T1 approximately. So T2 is equal to 1.275 T1. That's our first equation. Now, we want to work with our vertical. So we do the sum of the forces in the y is equal to, and we can look back at our free body diagram, we'll have t1 sine 43 plus t2 sine 55 minus 98. So it'll be t1 sine 43 plus t2 sine 55 minus 98 is equal to 0. Now, if we do the same thing for this one that we did for the last problem, actually what we can do is we can go and substitute in this value. So we know that T2 is equal to 1.275 T1. So we can plug this in over here. So this becomes T1 sine 43 plus 1.275 T1 sine 55 minus 98. That should be equal to 0. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my calculator to find the sine 43 so I can get all of these with just decimals in front of my T1s. And so when I do this, I get 0.682 T1 plus 1.044 T1 minus 98 is equal to 0. Once I do that, I can combine my T1s pretty easily. So I get 1.726 T1 minus 98 is equal to 0. And so I move my 98 to the other side. I get 1.726 T1 is equal to 98. And so I get T1 is equal to 57 newtons. Once I find my T1, I can plug it back into this equation. T2 is equal to 1.275. Let me just rewrite that out. So T2 is equal to 1.275 T1. So my T2 is equal to 1.275 times 57. And that gives me 72 newtons. And that is my T2. If you want to check these values, you can always plug them back in here to these equations. So you can plug in your T2 and your T1, and that should equal out to very close to zero. Again, we are using significant digits, so we are rounding, so this should be very close to zero. And same thing goes for this equation as well. When you plug your T1 and T2 into here, you should get very, very close to zero. And that's how we do signs at different angles. So we're going to end with this problem, and we will finish this in class. So you can pause, read it, and try to work it out.